I want to ask you to help us expand, protect, bring energy into this mandala. So if you can go to the website, the donate page, and help us, if you can, if you can. And if you would like to see these teachings continue. The topic is uh, also uh, commonly in the five skandhas or the five heaps or the five, uh, the five uh, aspects of uh, human existence that are, are used as a teaching uh, structure, form, feeling, perception, out of here, out of there, or into here, into there. Concept, thinking process. It's the fourth skanda. That's the one we get wound up in that we think we're going to be able to use to protect ourselves, get somewhere, you name it. It's very valuable all over the place. We use it all the time, but I don't want to do without it. But it needs to be situational where you need to do that, not and not out of some kind of fear. That you, so you need to cover up your feelings, your emotions, your perceptions with some kind of structure or belief. Don't conclude anything. If it needs concluding, you won't be able to stop it. So, the skanda are the five sense fields and their objects. Don't particularly want to go into any of those, but let's go into the third one. Perception. What you see, what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you think. Did I miss any of them? What you taste? Did I say that one? All of these are on receive, or they should be, if you're functioning in a sane, uplifted, respectful way. When I say respectful, respectful to what's arising in your mind stream. Don't agree with it. Don't object to it. And don't ignore it. We could have quite a few uh, questions just on that topic. Belief means you, you think it's true. So perception impulse is another way of saying it. You perceive something and you immediately have an impulsive reaction to it. Instead of just receiving, you, you react or you're impulsive about it. Well, it can't be that. That shouldn't be. That's too loud or that's not loud enough. And on and all the different things that leave what just occurred, perception, what you just saw, smell, taste, touch, thought, Thought, yes, thought is included. Thought is just, one of, sometimes it's divided out as being the five sense fields and the sixth one. No, those are all, those are all receiving something. The sixth, the sixth uh, uh, consciousness is actually receiving thoughts. And you're not generating. Or you might be, you might be generating them. Because consciousness is always finding the form it needs to do what? Whatever it thinks is happening that needs to be disagreed with, whatever it thinks is happening that needs to be gathered in and protected, and you know what I'm saying. There's always a position. If there's a position on anything that arises, this is impulse. This practice, as far as I'm concerned, and at this point I am concerned, is about awareness of what this is, not about leaving what we are aware of for what it means, or what could be done with it, or does it have any value, or what's the point, someone said recently, a couple of times people have said, what's the point? Someone sent me some pictures of uh, people on their wall, and, you know, ancestors, grandmas and grandpas, and those people all framed, and, and, and they said, what's the point? What is the point? What's the point of having all these pictures of people that Somebody comes in your, into your house and you have to introduce them to everybody. What's the point? Well, the first noble truth is the point. Life is suffering. And we, you or me, we may be able to cover that up with <laughs> happiness or everything's okay and you just have to be uplifted, the power of positive thinking. And I think there's 15 or 20 other ideas about how to just be happy and smile all the time. I'm not against that. Go ahead, smile. A life is suffering. The cause is wanting something else. So if something arises, and we perceive it with our with our eyes, with our with our nose, tongue, body, mind, whatever it may be. Maybe food. 
You can, you can use something really simple that's kind of impersonal, but extremely intimate. I'll say that again. Kind of impersonal, but it's so intimate. Taste and smell are right here. And so, and they have a dynamic to them that is pleasant, unpleasant, or indifferent, or all the variations that could show up there. My friends, it is about receiving as much as you can, being aware of whatever shows up. If you abandon, I'm using that word, abandon what arises in any way for an opinion about it, a conclusion about it, do anything with it other than just receive it, and you are participating in the chaos and uh, destruction that is going on in the world. Maybe not as much as Shell Oil Company, which you're calling what, S Hell? Hell, uh, Hell Oil Company? Renamed it, I think. Hell, Hell Oil. That's what's coming. What can you do about that? Not much. I mean, you might need to go and protest or write letters to your congressman or something or participate in the system that is set up to do what? Control you. This is control. It's about control. It's not about democracy. So that's about as political as I'm going to get here. So what shows up that you perceive with any of the sense fields, including the mind, whatever you perceive, don't add unless you have to. In other words, unless unless out of the awareness that you are on receive that you're receiving, also with that, there is some understanding that allows you or permits you or encourages you or is choiceless for you to reach out and stop that. That's the way this can function. It, it, it functions out of spontaneity and out of a Buddha nature, which is your birthright. Or you can turn it away. Just, I don't want Buddha nature. I just want to have my way and I want to screw with people when I can get away with it and get all their money or have a lot of power or look good, polish my face with look good cream. <laughs> I recently bought some uh, look good cream. I thought people were saying I looked tired. And so I listened. I look, look tired, look kind of worn out or something. I, so I got some cream that I thought, well, maybe the bag's under my eyes. I could put something there and I wouldn't look, because I don't feel particularly tired. And I don't think I act tired. But I don't really want to look tired. Do you? That's a question. Do you? Okay. Or do I? Uh, it didn't work. <laughs> so just as a warning, don't buy that brand. I can't remember what it was. But. So what am I saying? I'm not saying you shouldn't do something, see something and then do something about it. It's the impulsive quality. It's the, I got to do that. Or I have to say this. She said, they said, they did. I watched this. I listened to this. I thought about it. And, and I'm, I'm not going to put up with that. Impulse. I'm impulse to what that is doing is that is covering up the situation that happened with your ideas about it that are incorrect. There, It is a projection. You're projecting onto things. It's basically called prejudice. You're against things you don't understand and are threatened by. Or that beats that the other way is anything that happens that triggers anything that is, uh, you need to look at this. You need to look at this. You need to look and see what this is. Face the wall and look and look and look and watch what arises. Look at it and don't add. Look at it, don't subtract. That's don't 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 uh, encourage that or fluff it up and don't don't uh, uh, judge that or take it down when you don't even understand what it is. This doesn't mean you aren't having a reaction to it or a difficult feeling or this feeling that someone said or did this and now you're feeling this way. It doesn't mean that there isn't some cause and effect going. <laughs> of, for, of course, for some, but not as much as it looks like. Most of it is your feeling, your reaction to it is being triggered by her and what she said. So we get to have the perception of what's happening out here and then that's the little part, that's the trigger part. She's doing this, she's saying this, she's doing this. And then we have a reaction to it. I'm being a little bit dramatic here. We have a reaction to it. She said, how dare her do what, whatever it may be. However, and we have this reaction. We've totally left what happened. 
It's not what we're in our own soap operas. If we close our eyes, plug our ears, shut our mouth, and held our nose, but now we've got our own little drama going on. Am I being sarcastic? Yes, I am. Am I saying don't do that? Not exactly. Don't go to war with it, but be aware of it. Be, be aware so that that which is a self, which is continually trying to control everything based on how we feel about that or what we think about this, constantly trying to control, it's just a, it's a horrible, horrible dead end. But it appears like it's a straight line. The dead end quality is, is not so much that it's running into something. It's just that it goes in circles. It gets better, it's worse. It gets better, it's worse. It's like the trigger shows up and then she goes away, or he shows up, or the situation shows up and triggers you. It could be your job situation, it could be the Sangha. This is the best place to study that kind of thing, not because we're so great, but because the intention of everybody here is to try to see the truth. Try to see what it is so you, you see it yourself. You don't just necessarily believe what this old man is saying. I'm encouraging you to see this, and we are using everything we can, every teaching we can. Invite that person in, whoever it is. Come in. I thought I didn't recognize that ponytail. Edge of the door. So, how do we do it? We do it with awareness. You're aware of what is arising. And you're also aware of the way your mind is immediately jumping on something. You, you first start out with the awareness of the, of the perception. It's, it's this, it's black, it's red, it's white, it's a person, it's Jim, it's Mary, it's this person and their activity, or it's this situation. So we perceive that, we perceive that with our, with our, with our eyes and with our ears we hear what they're saying everything comes together these uh, these sense fields come together in the sixth consciousness as this is the same person the hearing is is not a person the smelling is not a person the thinking is not a person no one thinks there isn't any one who is solid and separate from anything else it's an illusion that we are deluded by See it. Don't settle for anything less other than the complete, absolute, ultimate truth right in your own perception. You're looking at it all the time. But you probably, if you're at this talk, you're probably covering it up with something. Your fear of the unknown very likely can be that because there's quite a bit that's unknown. We're afraid of that. So we operate out of fear. Most of the world is operating out of hope for something better and fear of something worse on some level or another. <clears throat> perception impulse, perception. And then the impulse is the response to that. That is generally, in anyone who has no mind training at all, is, is operating under the auspices of a self that thinks things are right or things are wrong or I'm doing better, I'm doing worse, I can't stop this, this is, I'm, I'm hurting everybody, I'm helping everybody. Why doesn't anybody see how I'm helping everyone? Or why can't everybody see that I'm sorry for all the havoc that is coming down because of something I said or did? It's endless. And you cannot interrupt the circle and stop it. That's what we try to do. We try, we see it, we start to recognize it. We say, I just have to stop acting. I have to just be quiet. I even say, don't hook up your vocal cords. Not because I'm telling you not to speak. I'm saying if you put some tension in that area, you'll find that you say less. Sometimes this is called, here it comes, the big P word, prognosis. No, wait, it's not that one. Uh, petunias? No. Patience. 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 You, you don't immediately jump from the perception into the impulse of action of responding, covering it up with your hatred, aggression. Does that look real? Does it look like I'm mad? I am, because I'm not under the control of anything, including emotions. Why? There's no one here. But that's anger. That's, that's, not, that's not me acting. That's just anger. And if a person is 
pretty good at acting, and that's what they'll do also. They actually are angry. Perception, impulse. Something shows up, we jump. So it's not about not doing that. It's about being aware that what you see, you're going to have some kind of a reaction to. It's about being, being very clear about the nature of the, of the reaction so you don't, so the reaction isn't so strong that it covers up what the perception was of the other person, of the other statement, of their tone of voice, of, 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 or, 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 or. It's all of that coming up at one time that we run away from or we charge into. It might not be an either or like that. It might be very simple. We might not change our expression, yet we are pissed. We just don't say anything about it. Does it look like I'm mad? Speak. I didn't say speak because you can't say speak without going. I said steak with a T, but you were fooled by it, weren't you? I know, don't give up your day job. <laughs> I won't. I don't have a job. So perception means that something has come to you, you've perceived it here, or you've per perceived it and someone has said something, you not only perceive what they say, but you're perceiving, watch it closely. Watch it closely. You perceive what they're saying, but you also, you also perceive your reaction to it, that you don't just see, hear it as a sound, as a, as a tone of voice, as a drop in tone as they speak, or a raising in tone, or a level tone. You don't really perceive all of it all at once coming at you, coming towards you, but instead you immediately start to stick things on. It can't be, it shouldn't be. I don't feel that this doesn't work. And probably, more than likely, I can't go in and examine everybody's consciousness, that some act of, some aspect of consciousness is curled up somewhere, hidden. This is sometimes called the uh, Ali Vijnana or Vijnana, however you pronounce it, the storehouse consciousness. And the storehouse consciousness is not just one thing. It's everything. Every, everything. If you can find a singularity, this finger is, sing is singular. It's different than this one, but it's a hand. But if you can find the singularity, then there's un uncountable, there's countless singularities in the Alia or the storehouse. And it's not a place. It's a way of talking about the complete magic of consciousness. Don't miss it. Don't, don't, when I say don't miss it, don't live the rest of your life fighting with yourself, fighting with others, but realize who you are. So the warfare is over. You have no demands anymore. You don't even care if you keep living or not because you see what this is. You actually are looking at it all the time. And it is brilliant. And it's without a center. It's without a fringe. It looks like the sun, but it doesn't look like the sun because if you look at the sun, you don't see anything. It's that bright. And it's not an experience. If it's an experience, here's an experience. I'm throwing my rocks in the air. There. That won't last. You notice it's over with now? The watch hit the floor and run. But there was a moment when, before I did that, where it hadn't happened yet. And now it's happened. That is an incredible illusion that helps you or me or anyone think that things are happening. Nothing is occurring. That's an illusion. But don't believe that. Don't believe anything I say. Don't disbelieve anything I say. And if you can do it, if you're a student of mine, then you could at least consider it. Don't ignore what I'm saying. Listen to it. Consider it. Don't believe it. Don't discard it or throw it away. It sucks. What is it? Suffering, the first noble truth. So receive that difficulty and see what is the fundamental nature of suffering. What's the fundamental nature of it? What is it? Find out. Find out what it is. So you know, the search is over. You actually see what it is. It's not separate from anything, anywhere. Very difficult to see this firsthand. Other questions? What? Even knowing, what is it like to perceive suffering without it hooking up to this motherboard of an ego? 
it's going to show up differently for each person. Some people it'll show up as loneliness. Some people, because it's not done yet, the job is not done. You're going up the mountain. You're, and I use the mountain as an example. Actually, you're not doing anything. It's more like you're just sitting there looking at this. But there is some kind of uh, situation. We're going to call it movement, for lack of another, watching what moves. And you're slowly changing your identity over from the description or the feeling of being a person or connected with a body or uh, with emotions or with perceptions, or with thinking, or the sixth sense seals, over from that to just the space in which those things occur, or consciousness only. It's a concept that you cannot use to figure things out, but you can use it as a reference point. And you ask me, how does it feel? Or what does it look like? What is it like to perceive? Yeah. Less the, the self is more the, the imaginary self, the ego, the narcissistic self, starts to starve because it's not getting the attention it used to get. And when it starts to starve, it start, may start to squirm. It happens, it's different with each person. Just like when Milarepa, the, the Tibetan, the great Tibetan saint, he's sometimes called in ancient times back in the, you know, over a thousand years ago or something like that. I don't remember his exact century, but went into retreat and was back there whining about it to his teacher. And his teacher more or less said in so many words, you're in retreat, just stay there. Keep, keep, keep practicing. I think that was Marpa, the translator. He wasn't, wasn't translating too well then. But he stayed in retreat. And he ended up writing a lot of music. So stay in retreat. Everywhere you go, you're carrying a retreat hut with you. If you've ever practiced uh, in a retreat, you have an idea what that's like. You're always alone. There isn't, there isn't anyone else, ultimately. But relatively, there's everybody, and they're all suffering. You need to help them. I need to help them. You need to help them. What do you, what do, you do to help them? Probably just stop meddling with them. Give them some space. Listen to what they have to say without going this way or going that way. More? Beyond bowing, what is it like to perceive suffering when the ego is discovered to be imaginary? Still doesn't feel good. Nothing needs to change. Realization is not a relative situation. I say this over and over, nothing will happen. It is not an experience. If you think it's an experience, like this is an experience, throwing a watch on the floor, was it? the illusion is there, there are experience, that these are the things that are real. The experience is no, they're impermanent. They show up, they're there, and they're gone. Let's all remember when I th threw the watch on the floor. See how vague that is? Did you notice which way the, 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 when it first didn't it bounce once and kind of go up in the air and then and then something ran right under it over behind the wall there you, just, you didn't even see that I don't know if you saw that or not. you're seeing it now though this is unstable this thing that you're leaning on as reality is not here it's unstable how do i know i don't know i don't know it in the conventional sense that i know that's a sound i'm just using that because that's your language Something happening and something not happening. I'm using that. But over here, there isn't anything happening other than what's happening, which it can't find itself. It can't find any, it can't find any center. That doesn't mean that I won't get mad and yell at, who did I yell at today? Susan Hirschfield, I yelled at her, and she was concerned I was going to have a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> More likely that, Susan, you might have a stroke. I'm not going to have a stroke. Well, on second thought, now you're not going to have a stroke. But what am I doing there? I'm, my explanation of it is I'm meeting her where she's at. She's showing me, Susan, not to talk about her interview, I'm not going to do that, but she's basically showing me the way in which she's boxing herself into something. And since I have permission from her to teach as a teacher, she hasn't fired me yet, although I think she comes close sometimes. And so, there was, you know, I could, it's not good. Uh, that's how I felt. I can't get in there. 
She's talking and talking and talking. And this is not a compliment, as you all know. She's much smarter than I am. I mean, I worked for Merrill Lynch for about 10 years, and then they fired me. But she worked there 37 years. Well, I only worked there 10. I could only fool them for 10 years. That's a lie. I only worked there six years. That's another lie. Either, you can't find uh, you can't find a location anywhere. And so I kind of blew up at her. Uh, was that was I really mad at her? No, I don't really get mad at anything at all. But, I, but anger is always there because it's no it no longer hooks to a being that cares about anything. But the energy of anger is just compassion. It's just compassion. You can disagree. I'd be happy to entertain your questions about anything. You again. The Valley. What what does all what what do all kinds of suffering have in common? They hurt in different levels, from a bee sting to having your arm cut off or running into a a blaze of fire from a a flamethrower in the First World War, being scorched to death by either the Germans or the Allies. Hurts. What is it you want to know? Let's go there. Ian Bowling, I'm thinking of like what is suffering? You're describing it as hurting. So That's is, the simplest way. Is pain and is pain and energy? Is suffering and energy? Sure. Pain on your nerve endings, pain in your mind, there's a nerve ending there, pretty strong one. Or if you don't get your way, or if, or if somebody misunderstands you and starts accusing you of something that you didn't do, you're not, then and they go after you, it's painful. Just like if your daughter uh, started functioning in a way that was not in line with what you should you think she should be doing, that would be painful. Wouldn't it? So I'm not sure if there's something else you want to know about that, that I may or may not know. Ian Bowing, I was just wondering what, what all suffering has in common. Painful. We want things to be otherwise. We, something arises. And the difficulty with it, there's the immediate pain that comes right out of any, whatever situation you're in. And then there's the pain that is in the consciousness we call the alia. Uh, and it's, and it's, it goes through the seventh consciousness of the paranoid part of the mind. It doesn't want this and wants that. And if this starts coming, we're going to really freak out because we can't, can't handle that. We can't do that. We cannot handle that anymore. Had enough of that. You ever said that? Have you ever heard someone say that? Of course. I've said it. You can't be married five times and not say that a few times. That's my credential. Of course, I was a sweetheart. They were there. I was trying really hard. I want to tell them that. More? I do. Go ahead. Ian Bowing, how come you can't see the truth? Well, I can see it. I'm seeing it fine. How come I can't see the truth without experiencing all the suffering that's coming my way? You have to go through it. And you can see the truth. You just have to look at a lot of lies first and realize that they're untrue. You have to look at your self-deception. And you, I could say this about everybody in here on some level, more than likely. I'm not saying the Buddha isn't sitting in here somewhere. Of course, the Buddha is sitting everywhere. But you have to realize it. What you're looking at is not what is exactly what is there. It can be quite a ways away from it. You're looking at your, at your ideas. If you look at Andy, or if you look at Andre, or if you look at anybody, you have ideas, perceptions about them. You're doing the same thing this direction. I'm, I'm using your perception of me to teach you. This is a setup. This is a monastery. But it's a setup. We create this. We create this building. There's a tradition that goes back thousands of years, where this is the way people were trained. So... Uh, it only took me three decades to realize what how this should look. And that three decades, more than three decades, was spent practicing very, very hard on myself. I'm not saying people around me thought I was 
practicing hard. They might have thought I was wasting time. But to see what this is so that you can see this, so you live here, so you participate in the forums here, so you get your body mind to the cushion and to the wall, and you observe and you participate in book study, where we study the concepts that are that are the the way we talk about and understand the nature of reality according to the Buddhist teachings as they've been passed down through the centuries. More? Welcome. Sir. You said earlier today that the thought process protects the self. Sure. Can returning to that concept allow me to see what's arising more clearly? Probably. When I say the self, different ways of talking about there's the ultimate self, uh, which is shows up more in the uh, uh, Hindu approach. Uh, I don't know if you call it Hindu, probably a uh, Chisho could tell me more about that. But like in the Upanishads and so on, like that. But what we're talking about, what, what I am endeavoring, endeavoring to talk about here is the imaginary self, the, the one that, that, that is unreal. It's, fabri it's a fabrication to protect something that is not threatened. So it's self-deception. And so you're asking it about looking at the thinking process? And particularly returning to that concept, because it's clearly doing something with, with what's arising. But if I'm already <laughs> fueling the thoughts, I wonder if that yes. concept can be helpful. That, that would work, yes. Yes, it would be. More? Is that a misunderstanding of when you say just look at it? Is that adding something? No, you're not. You're not going to be able to help but add. When I say stop adding, I know you can't do that. I can't stop adding, but if I, if you use that kind of a dynamic, it helps you to realize uh, the the degree to which you keep covering things up by adding, by covering up, by coming to conclusions, by covering things up. Is the kind of adding that's a concept more helpful than the adding that is fueling? What do you want to know? You're not sure what you want to know? Anyone else not sure what they want to know? Michelle. You want to know? Okay. Are there any further questions? Yes, sir. Andre. <clears throat> Is the mind capable of selective thought and ignoring, totally ignoring what arises, what else arises in the mind stream? Yes, it is. It happens without your permission, with your permission, or with a little bit of that, but it's, it's a very vague area. That looks very crisp. It looks like you, you're doing it. If you talk to anybody with no mind training at all, they, some people can be extremely convincing about what is happening with them or with, with any situation, just because they so intensely believe their thoughts. Bob, yes, sir. When such a mind is so involved in and wrapped in his, the thoughts like uh, the composer, the maestro, the narrator, the director, yeah. the actor, yeah. all of it. Got it. How do this mind untangle the tight knot of ignorance? You just look at the knot without pushing on it, without pulling on it. Pushing is aggression, and without pulling is passion or changing it or blaming someone or any of the other ways of lessening the intensity of that knot, which is very uncomfortable or by ignoring and distracting yourself. I think I know you need to go get some Cheez-Its. I hear they're really good for you. Yeah, it's cheese, so it's milk. So, I mean, your mind will go in little directions to pull you away from, you really need to be eating saltines. You know, it's that, it's that foolish. I'm just uh, using that as a dumb example, but it's that foolish what the thought will do to get away from what the truth. And what is the truth? There's no solid being here, and there's no solid being anywhere. If I'm pointing at anything, that's what I'm 
endeavoring to tell you I'm only up here wearing this bib and this black and this this that I got from Sohaki so Sama as a mountain seat ceremony in 1991 in Japan. I'm only using all of this and this uh, pr presentation of being a Buddhist monk, which I am. But it's empty of what you what you're seeing here. There is no presence here that is actually here. This is an illusion, not that you can't touch it, push on it, bang on it, make a racket with it like that. Not that you can't do that, but it is unreal. It is unreal. Everything that shows up in your mind and runs around this way and runs around that way and shows up large and shows up and goes away, shows up with feathers, shows up with what well, camel hair all over it. Camel hair. Is that a camel? Not necessarily. Might just be camel skin. On and on and on, the whole fabrication of the mind is just incredibly able to find its own form, which means whatever it wants, the consciousness can find anything, and it will look for everything until it sees there isn't anything to look for. Why? Because consciousness has finally found its own form, which is consciousness only. These are concepts that I'm using to tell you that nothing happens. Go ahead, sir. Would that your answer also include a king, a kingly focused mind? King? Kingly, K E N K E E N L Y. Kingly. Oh, kingly, yes. So not the royalty bet. No. no. <laughs> yes. It could be it could be keenly or closely focused on anything and could immediately just uh, go everywhere at once. <clears throat> when it's necessary, dependent origination, pratitya samutpada, when it's necessary to focus on the whole. In this uh, kotsu, uh, the mind can go right there and it's not disturbed by anything. It's not distracted by anything because there's no longer anything that it demands or wants. So therefore it is able to, with great precision and great keenliness. Yeah, that's the, yeah. Further? Terry Bowie. Go ahead, Terry. I'll get back to you. Terry. Thanks. Thank you. Um, can you say more about being alone? You know, with that, what being alone is when there is no separation? Um, yes. Yes. The feeling of being alone is part of how the ego mind, what's left of the ego mind after you've been practicing for a while, uh, starts to show up as feeling like we're alone even though there's a big crowd of people around us because there's no way there's, there, there is no, the, the aloneness uh, is coming out of, there isn't anyone really there anyway, here or there. So that's where that shows up, but it's not like something is missing. That's, uh, that's different. More. Terry Bowling. Are we our own entity of an own entity of consciousness itself? Bowling. I'm not sure what you want to know by that question. So let's go to the fundamental part of it. What do you want to know? So is Terry Bowen, is being alone just an aspect of consciousness? Bowen or like, I mean, what's coming up for me is like, this, like almost like a, a balloon or something, like some image, some entity. Is, does that exist, Bowen? I don't know. Maybe. I'm not getting exactly what you want to know. And if you, even if I did, I might not be able to respond. So. Terry Bob, is, is aloneness an aspect of consciousness? Well, it's an aspect because there's a, there's a feeling uh, as you're going along, the feeling of being all by yourself and alone. So it can be experienced as lonely. Later on, it can be experienced as just feeling alone. And later, uh, later on, you could say a later on means as you practice, uh, eventually it's possible that there isn't any, any position at all. There's no locality anymore. So you can't really be alone if there's no one there. And you can't really be alone if there's no location that's any different than any other location. So you've actually, here you are embodied in a, you're still going to the bathroom. You're still, biting your nails or whatever you're doing with them. And, and nothing occurs anymore. Everything is, uh, 
uh, is just, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's non-differentiated. There's no, there's no, no, nothing showing up or going away. And this isn't, this, I'm not the first one to talk about this, but I'm not talking about, because I heard this decades ago, but it was, it's only now that I'm looking at it. I'm talking out of what I see. It just happens to agree with what I was told uh, a long, long time ago in different ways. Go ahead, Jinchu. Jinchu Bowing, you were talking about having to go through the suffering. Yes. In terms of relative, uh, relatively trying to improve our situation, putting air conditioning on if it's really hot or something. How do you hear we were going to do that? We're going to do that? Yeah. Oh, out to our house. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe here later. Um, how do we know how much of that improving our, our physical situation is too much, is covering up something Good. that we need to go through? Good question. It, it's, it's very unlikely that trying to make yourself comfortable is going to be too much. Uh, air conditioning, those kinds of things. I mean, if you want to go in there and that way, or eating what you need to eat, getting taken care of, uh, with whatever, whatever comes up medically. We're not talking about, that's why in this uh, situation, we don't, the forms in here are not militaristic, where you have to be here and you have to sit a certain length of time. We encourage it and the forms are here and, and there are people that are, feel strongly enough about this form that they come in and to be the, 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 uh, uh, the, uh, what's that guy that rings the bell? Don. The Don and the Doshi. I remember that one. Yeah. So it, it, those people come in and create a form, but part of it is their practice. You come in and participate in it, but it's soft in the sense that it's not like, say, uh, Mount Tremper or, uh, or you know, Shambhala Mountain or what used to be Shambhala Mountain, where you go in and you have to do it a certain way. I was subjected to that. Uh, Detroit Zen Center is also you go there, you have to do it, have to do it a certain way and they yell at you if you don't. So I don't think that's workable uh, at all. So as far as you or anybody taking care of yourself, I think you should do whatever you need to do. Some people don't want to be here. This is a hard place to live from the point of view of forms. But if you're really sincere about your mind stream and the difficulty you're feeling there, this is a, a good place to be. Maybe not the only place, of course, but you, I sometimes say you shouldn't, if you don't want to be here, don't be here. It's not something you have to do. But if it's something you have to do, I'm opinionated here. You have to train your mind because if you don't, if you live for another 30 years and you die without seeing what this is or a lot, without at least having the intention, that's the most powerful one. Even if you die without seeing it, that intention doesn't stop because it has not, does not have a goal in the conventional sense of, oh, I, I finally got it, or I didn't get it. You actually, the intention is uh, like looking at a black hole or like looking at a, in the middle of the sun, looking at something where nothing shows up. There, there isn't anything there. How can I possibly do this? Do it anyway. So the same thing with taking care of yourself. You don't, don't need to check and see whether you should do this or that. More specific question, do you have it? It seems really magnetizing to me once I start trying to make myself more comfortable that I there's a fear that I'm going to go overboard, maybe at the expense of my practice. Most important thing about the practice is the, are the three jewels. There are people that practice uh, off in the distance that may never come here. Uh, I invite everybody to come. Um, Terry's been here many, many times, but it's been years ago. And Navid and I have talked about how could he come from Iran, which is not such a good place to be hanging out these days, the way it looks. Uh, so we've been talking about that. Yokido could be here, but she's not. She's up in Minnesota, hanging out, you know, enjoying herself with her rock garden. It's just an endless. So is she doing right around? No, she's doing exactly what she needs to do. So I tell her I want her, want her to come here. But she and she would be happy to do anything I said, but she can't do that. She can't leave that rock garden. I'm not saying, saying she has to justify it, but she's not here. 
if she, how do I know uh, she uh, doesn't need to be here? She's not here. How do I know that you need to be here? You're here, at least for today. Difficult. That's difficult. You've been here for years. But that doesn't mean you couldn't move down the street like we've talked about before. Go somewhere else so you wouldn't be under this. This is difficult. It's difficult not only to live in these forms, but, but being with this particular Sangha or any spiritual community is going to be difficult. You know, people tend to rub up against each other and uh, create difficulty. But better to do it in, in an environment like this than in a, in a community where there's no communication at all. Further, further questions? Do I have a watch? Oh, there's my watch. <laughs> <laughs> Threw it away. <laughs> Give me that. You were thinking of taking that, weren't you? Yeah. You already have a watch. Okay. Okay. That's a, we're out of time, but I'm happy to respond to other questions if, if there are any. Have you done? Go ahead, Abid. I'll get I'll get you in the back. What, what is your name? Michelle. Michelle. I couldn't. I didn't know you're Michelle Lee, right? Yeah, it's nice to see you. Where's your compatriot? Um, she's just still winding down. Winding down. So she got wound up, you didn't? <laughs> yeah, well, anytime you ride on Amtrak, you're going to get wound up. She's probably sitting in a window seat, right? It was an experience. So. Okay. Okay, Navid, go ahead. Navid Bowie. Um, are all suffering stems from physical pain or discomfort? Bowie. Well, physical pain or um, discomfort, d discomfort of some kind. Yes. Discomfort of uh, not doing something right. Somebody has done something to you that you, you think they shouldn't have. You've been mistreated or abused, but some kind of something. And this all comes back to that. There's a solid self that thinks that he, she or they, they should get some kind of special treatment or not get the treatment they're getting. This doesn't mean that if you're if you're uh, being uh, abused, I mean, literally being beat up on or robbed, that you somehow have that coming or that you did something really bad. Quite often people will say, well, it's your karma is bringing you this and it's that's making it a little bit too personal. It's uh, it's better than that. And it's worse than that. It's better than that. There's no one there or no one who is suffering, no matter how much it hurts. And. Uh, there's no singularity separation called a being. But that doesn't mean there isn't pervasive, all pervasive suffering all the time. So this is what we're doing as uh, bodhisattvas, as uh, as uh, practitioners on the path, the Mahayana path, is to try to put others before ourselves as much as we can. Some people can do that quite a bit, and other people are pretty challenged by that situation. More, Nabi? So I was wondering if um, the suffering um, is originally physical. Softening. Softening. Phys physical. Yeah, yes, both. Physical, body, mind are not two different things. They just look like it. That's, that's another part of the illusion. This, this is the mind moving. This is, this is everything you see that's in motion is, is the mind. It just looks like a, a bunch of separate things that have their own singularity, autonomy. They have some, they have very little. I can move my arm, but I can't move uh, Michelle's arm because her arm's hooked onto her and it's down the road. But I can ask her to move her arm, move your arm. Okay, see, I just suddenly have control of Michelle. <clears throat> now give me all your money. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, that's the way cults work. You know, they get you to do stuff and then the next thing you know, they're controlling you. So I don't care what you do. The thing I would recommend that you do is find out who you are so you don't get your identity from your own thought patterns, your own emotions, or from anyone else. Don't get it from anywhere. Find out so you know who you are. If you know, you, you will be, you'll be fearless because there, there can't any, the, the nothing, who you are isn't threatened, can't be threatened because it is not a singularity. It's not separate from anything. It isn't even a, uh, all one singularity. All of that is uh, misunderstanding if one goes that direction. Are there further questions? Bowie. Yes, sir. Diane Bowie. Um, we 
talking about happiness earlier, and Trunk Rinpoche had that teaching to to just cheer up. He did. Can we? How do we cheer up without abandoning suffering? Smile. To start, just to cheer up that way. You don't have to cover it up. And I'm not saying go around with a smiley face on all the time, but I'm saying that kind of a of a feeling is is available. Everyone knows about it. And people don't want to do it because they don't feel that way. People would rather be obstinate for themselves. Kind of knowing, can suffering help us to appreciate more? Um, I think so. If you see that it's inevitable, there's going to be suffering in so many areas. And what we do with suffering is we try to blame. It's not that there isn't the cause and effect isn't there. Anyone who's looking closely at this, like scientists and people who are looking, are actually tracking it down, but it gets more and more difficult trying to find out why you or I or anyone else has a particular difficulty or pain. Sometimes that's not as simple as just saying, well, this caused that. You have to go in and see that the elaboration, of just the chemical elaboration of dependent origination is incredibly complicated and cannot really be tracked down very accurately. We're getting a little better at it. I think probably the person that's the best at it would be Monica Matea. <laughs> she's a scientist. But she's been, the reason I say that is she's been trying to find out why I'm having so much skin pain. And uh, <clears throat> all the doctors I've been to uh, can't really pin it down, can't say what it is. So she's been investigating that. <clears throat> Did I get close to what you're saying? I'm saying it's so complicated. You might as well just cheer up because life is suffering. But we could actually be, have uh, an uplifted. This is what uh, Trungpa Rinpoche talked about, the Vidyadara, the Dorje Dradala Mukpo, talked about an uplifted. Uh, in, in that tradition, we don't do that here, but it's a practice called Windors. Well, you know about that, Drala. So it's about just with no reason, no purpose, no anything other than just let's raise the, the energy, the spiritual energy of this. I particularly would rather see that happen on its own rather than actively go in and uh, try to get all your horses in a row or something. And I, I'm, I'm not against that. The Shambhala community does that. I participated in lots of songs and ceremonies where that's it's all about doing that. More? Take one more question from uh, Alyssa. And no, then I'll take one from Yuhan. And then we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa Bowing. I, my question is about um, the perception impulse and Thank primordial you. intelligence. And are they not, they're not the same, but they're not separate? Is that? Oh, they're not, yeah, yes, they're not separate. They're, they're, they're not the same. It's the, the consciousness finding its own form. Sometimes it's trying to find the form of somebody who's afraid, some, a, some aspect of consciousness through causes and conditions coming down to, to us from beginning of time, forming as human beings, another human being, another human being, warfare between tribes or between uh, villages in, uh, in, in South Africa uh, five centuries ago. That, this, that's us. We're here again. We're here again, just to go back and redo a little bit of research in that area in deeper levels of consciousness. We've all been everybody. And here we are again, all being this specific person. And so uh, primordial intelligence is just a, the fundamental nature of intelligence, which doesn't operate under the auspices of the control of a self that is shrunk down into paranoia and is trying to manipulate others in order to protect himself, herself, themselves, from uh, some kind of a harm that is imaginary. And so they try to control others with the idea of you get other people to do as, as I say, then this is what dictators do. Power, 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 especially uh, men. I don't think there's been too many women dictators, although maybe, maybe some. Monica, why is that funny? It's not that funny. Monica, it's funny. <laughs> I don't know why it's funny. <laughs> uh, okay. Is that good, Alyssa, or anything else? Did you want to connect connect it with uh, 
um, with something else about uh, perception impulse? No? Alyssa Bowing, I was struggling to find the mute button there. Um, yeah, just the, the like apparent otherness will like my perception impulse of like seeing that there's other and wanting to explain it or not explain it. And just sort of having like the perception impulse and the primordial intelligence, just, I don't know, it, it seems to be not, not separate, not the same. I don't really have the words well, for it. Well, perception, the uh, way I'm talking about perception and impulses is in order to help people work with that, is we, we, we see something, we have a perception of something, and we immediately, uh, even aggressively, or, or greedily grasp it or aggressively shove it away based on an impulse to get rid of it. We don't like it. It's no good. It shouldn't be there. Got to get rid of that. Something like that. That's why, as far as the primordial intelligence, probably won't do anything. It just sees this, has respect for the confusion. There's respect because we see, to use the commonly used uh, picture, we see, the, we see the big picture so clearly. Uh, like the personal experience of that as you meet someone who's maybe abusing or accusing you of something, maybe something you did, maybe something you didn't do, maybe something you kind of did, but not really, you know, all the variations on that. And what you see is instead of this angry person coming at you, instead you see that, but you also see behind that there are 10 or 15 more layers of suffering that they are trying to avoid by blaming you. Even if you, whether you did it or not, didn't do it is somewhat beside the point from the point of suffering. Because you, if you're doing something, uh, it's probably choiceless. Even if you do something very terrible, um, have to look very careful at this. It's not to say that someone isn't responsible, but no one's fundamentally to blame, to blame. This is a big misunderstanding. It isn't going to turn around in anyone's mind that I can see, the way it looks here, unless there's a lot of mind training. And I don't know if it has to be Buddhist, but I don't know what else you'd do has to be some kind of orientation where it's about uh, seeing the truth yourself. So, Yuhong, go ahead. Yuhong Wang, thank you. Yesterday, you mentioned about trust during a book study, and you mentioned that you trust our sincerity on this path, not yes. really care about our enlightenment. You also mentioned that you're deeply concerned about us. So, I'm wondering what are you concerned about? Bye. So I'm concerned uh, if, if, I, if it looks like you're on the path and you're connected with me on the path, then this is different than other teachers. Everybody does this differently. I don't want to lose you. So I, I don't want to, if I can, if I have a little bit of say, so I don't have much, but you're listening to me. So you're receiving something. You're doing something that you probably would not be doing if you had not listened to me a little bit or give me the benefit of the doubt a little bit, had some connection with me. You're meditating. You're meditating in the way I instruct. You and I have a connection. I have a connection with everyone here uh, in different frequencies or strengths, however you want to say it. So I'm I'm not just going to sit back and say, well, it doesn't matter what Yu Hung does. It does matter to me. It does matter. And so I, if there's anything I can do to keep your keep your uh, keep you returning to the cushion, returning to this little. Uh, this uh, uh, sangha that is kind of amazing. Since you, since um, uh, COVID, we have actually because of COVID, we have this amazing ability to, to talk on uh, a Zoom. So uh, that's that's what I mean. I, but at the same time, if you come back and say, uh, "So, Gazan, I, I really want to go study under John Cabot Zinn," and you know, he's uh, seems to be a lot more clear on things and seems to help me more. You know, I would respect that. I mean, if you wanted to have a conversation somewhat, I might say, I don't recommend it. I don't think that's a good approach. It's not Buddhism. It's it's a, a therapist or a psychiatrist or psych, uh, a psychologist trying to use mindfulness practice to enhance his or her, well, in his case, his um, uh, reputation, I guess. So uh, I want to help you with your permission. And that's that's what I mean. Is that helpful? Uh, at the same time, if you come to me as a student, uh, 
I'm going to function as your teacher, and that may not be comfortable. Yeah, that's very helpful. And uh, uh, I appreciate no matter either you're hard or soft on me. So if that is the teaching, I'm ready. Bye. Good. Well, I'm ready too. So let's keep going. It's Sangha, Sangha. It's a teacher, the teaching in the community. Without the community, without a student, there's no teacher. A teacher doesn't just go out and find it. If they do, it's not a teacher. It's someone who's manipulating things and wants control of people. If it's a true teacher, they don't care if you're there or not from the point of view of, of them because they, they don't see anything about the Buddha. They know you're already the Buddha, but they also know that the consciousness that shows up that doesn't realize that will continue to, spur, uh, to spin and go, go all through the six realms or maybe more realms, go down into the hungry ghost realm, the animal realm, the, the hell realm, back into the God realm, back into the human realm, back into the jealous God realm, on and on and on, looking for something else. Second noble truth, wanting something else. And when the body dies, you have no anchor in this world. So then you're completely vulnerable to everything that is trying to get your attention. And there's a lot more in that realm, the intermediate state, than there is in this one that has access because you have no, you have, don't, have, don't have the protection of a human form. Listen, get it, give it a little bit of consideration. You don't have to believe it. I don't want you to believe it. Don't believe anything. This is what belief looks like. And some people need to believe. They need this. They can't, they can't do this kind of a path. This is a very difficult path because there, it gets worse. Less and less handholds. Less and less proof that you're even getting anywhere. More and more uh, feeling that this isn't working. This isn't going anywhere. I'm not feeling good. I'm, I'm feeling really good. And then it goes away. And, and that's why I'm here. Bring it to me. Or not, or do something else with it. Jishin. Jishin Bowing. What is the relationship between primordial intelligence and perception only? Well, I just covered that with Elisa, but I'll, I'll have to go through it again, I guess. So what is it you didn't understand about what I told Elisa? She thinks she's going to get away with this. She's not. Perhaps I didn't pay enough attention, sorry. <laughs> oh, you didn't pay attention. Okay. Well, if you're going to take responsibility for it, then I'd be happy to respond. <laughs> okay. Primordial intel intelligence is just, a, is just a basic intelligence, just the intelligence that arises and shows up as a, as a praying mantis uh, or a gira giraffe or a crocodile or a human being. Just this amazing situation. It's just that with a human the Buddha arose and other enlightened masters, other enlightened be beings who see what this says. We don't know how long this has been happening, but we know our history tells us 2,500 years of the Buddha's teaching anyway. And what, and that's why it broke up into so many different schools because one school would have faded out. But 18 schools, not all of them will fade out. So, Perception impulse, however, is you perceive something and you react, whereas primordial, primordial intelligence doesn't do anything. It may react, it may not. It may show up as, a, as just a receiving part of consciousness. It doesn't have a position as an identity, but it may have a position as hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, feeling, thinking anything projecting, spinning around, not spinning around, everything is available to primordial intelligence, including primordial ignorance. But perception only is, is the way I'm using it uh, here is that you perceive something and you react. And what I'm recommending is that you are aware of that. And one of the ways is saying, don't hook up your vocal cords. You perceive something, you want to say something back to somebody, but you don't. You also don't necessarily swallow it or, or lecture yourself how uh, saying, well, it doesn't really matter anyway. Nothing matters. Don't, don't go into the nihilism part of it. Just watch what moves. Don't accept it. Don't reject it. Don't look away. 
Thank you. So in that dynamic, where is where is the consciousness seeing consciousness? Um, where is consciousness seeing consciousness? Yes. It's, it's probably not. It's wound up in a tight knot of a ride that is trying to squeeze some kind of happiness or some kind of result out of uh, the fact that my computer has a low battery. <laughs> Apparently we're listening, we're you? <laughs> Over here. Thank you. That must mean it's time to do something else. Hi, this is Chiezan, the prior at Sokokoji Buddhist Monastery. Sokazan offers these talks without expecting anything in return. If you value these talks and would like them to continue, please visit our donate page at www.sokokoji.org. Thank you.